world news tonight. Struck again. Second earthquake hits Afghanistan days after the first killed more than 2,000. Blood soaked. Death toll in Israel Hamas conflict nears 2,000 as the war enters its fifth day. On fire. Flight suspended as fire rips through multi-storey car park at UK's Luton Airport. Up and away. Hot air balloons paint New Mexico sky, attracting balloon enthusiasts from all around the world. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News This Day Tonight. We begin tonight as another earthquake struck Western Afghanistan. Just days after a series of deadly earthquakes left more than 2,400 people dead. The powerful earthquake struck an area near Herat, the capital of Herat province. There was limited information about the immediate impact of the quake. The office of Herat's governor said there had been huge losses in districts near areas that had been flattened by earlier quakes. Ministry of Information spokesperson Abdul Wahid Rayan reported that at least 80 people have been injured and a landslide has blocked the main Herat highway. The quake also flattened all 700 homes in Kahak village, which was untouched by the previous quake and subsequent tremors. The latest earthquake comes as Afghans are reeling from a 6.3 magnitude quake and subsequent aftershocks that struck the region on Saturday. According to Taliban officials, at least 2,445 people were killed and thousands more were injured in the country's earthquakes in years. Rescue workers and volunteers have been working around the clock to try to dig survivors and bodies from the ruins of the flattened villages since the weekend. We're now moving on to new developments in the conflict between Israel Defense Forces and the Palestinian militant group Hamas. As attacks from both sides continue, the death toll has now soared past 2,000. The death toll in the conflict between Israel and militant group Hamas continues to climb, with over 2,000 dead since Saturday. According to Israel Defense Forces, more than 1,200 people were killed in Israel since a surprise attack by Hamas at the weekend marked an increase in violence in the region. The Palestinian Ministry of Health stated that at least 900 people were killed in Gaza, including more than 400 children and women. Reports say that a total of 7,000 people have been injured on both sides. The figure jumped as Israel began to pound Gaza with airstrikes in retaliation for the attack by Hamas. And with Israel's leaders pledging to fight on, the death toll is almost certain to rise. Gaza won't return to what it was before. We will eliminate everything. If it doesn't take one day, it'll take a week, it'll take weeks or even months. We'll reach all places. The number of hostages held in Gaza is estimated to be at least 150, including 50 Israeli soldiers. Israel is committed to the security of its citizens, to their safety and well-being. I would like to emphasize, as to the well-being of those abducted and kidnapped, it should be made clear, not a hair on their heads should be harmed. Meanwhile, the Palestinian Foreign Ministry says that the Israeli military used prohibited white phosphorus munitions, while Hezbollah and Hamas have claimed that they launched attacks from Lebanon into Israeli territory, which landed in open areas or were successfully defended. As the Gaza blockade intensifies, aid efforts to provide food, fuel and medicine have proven difficult. Humanitarian groups are calling for the creation of safe corridors to bring basic necessities into Gaza as the fighting continues. U.S. President Joe Biden has reaffirmed Washington's support for Israel. However, Iraqi and Yemeni armed groups aligned with Iran have threatened to target U.S. Interest with missiles and drones if the U.S. steps into aid Israel. U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday denounced Hamas' attack as an act of terrorism, reaffirming Washington's full support of Israel in their ongoing armed conflict with the militant group. So in this moment, we must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. And we will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself, and respond to this attack. There's no justification for terrorism. There's no excuse. 
The remarks come after Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for the third time in four days, telling the Israeli leader that the U.S. response would be swift, decisive and overwhelming if it had been attacked in the same way, but noted that democracies must also uphold the rule of law in wartime. Biden also said that he would call on Congress to take urgent action to support Israel. However, Republicans are calling on Biden to refreeze the six billion U.S. dollars in funds released to Tehran in a prisoner swap deal last month, as more than a dozen GOP senators say the money could be used to fund terrorism. The call to refreeze the funds also come amid speculation of links between Iran and the Hamas attack over the weekend that sparked the armed conflict between Israel and the militant group, despite the U.S. having no smoking gun, proving that Tehran played a direct role. Meanwhile, Yemeni and Iraqi militant groups who have aligned themselves with Iran have threatened to target U.S. interests with missiles and drones if the U.S. intervenes to support Israel in its conflict with Hamas in Gaza. A number of Iraqi militant groups linked with Iran have shown full support for both Hamas and Palestine, while Yemen's Houthi movement made clear its plans if the U.S. gets involved in the conflict. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to visit Israel on Thursday to meet senior Israeli leaders in what Washington says will be a message of solidarity and support. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller told reporters Tuesday that Blinken will engage with Israel directly about the situation on the ground and discuss how the U.S. can continue to best support them in their fight. At least 29 people, including children, have been killed in a military raid on a camp for internally displaced people in northern Myanmar. All the victims were civilians. It is one of the deadliest attacks in the 63-year-long conflict in Kachin state. The aftermath of an artillery strike. At least 29 people, including women and children, were killed in Myanmar in the attack on a refugee camp near the border with China. The strike was one of the deadliest on civilians since the military seized power in the 2021 coup. That triggered conflict with a resistance movement and armed ethnic groups across the country. Video shared with and verified by Reuters showed residents in Liza preparing to bury dozens of victims in coffins laid out next to rows of freshly dug graves. The Shadow National Unity Government and the British Embassy in Yangon blamed the military for the shelling, which took place close to midnight on Monday in Kashin State. A spokesperson for the junta said the military was not responsible. China's foreign ministry called on, quote, relevant parties to resolve disputes peacefully and avoid escalation to ensure the security of the China-Myanmar border. Sources said artillery hit a camp for internally displaced people about three miles from a base in the town of Liza, run by the Kachin Independence Army, which has been in conflict with Myanmar's military for years. A spokesperson for the KIA called it a massacre against our ethnic people, according to Myanmar Now. All flights at UK's Luton Airport have been suspended after a huge fire ripped through a terminal car park. The fire service said that up to 1,200 vehicles may have been in the car park and subsequently damaged. Four firefighters and an airport staff member were taken to a local hospital that had been suffering the effects of breathing in smoke. The airport said in a statement that their priority is supporting emergency services and the safety of the passengers and staff. The ambulance services said a critical incident had been stood down, but it would remain on scene to support fire and rescue colleagues. Bedfordshire police have also asked people not to travel to the area. Hundreds of people are stranded in Luton with no way of getting home, with many saying their cars were in the car park. There's a heavy police presence with many officials trying their best to direct people away from the scene. All the hotels are fully booked and many passengers said the airlines have simply dumped them. London Luton Airport is UK's fifth largest airport. We'll be back with more world news after a short commercial break. Later on the road to the White House. Just hours after Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announced he would run for president as an independent, more than $11 million gushed to the coffers of the super PAC supporting him. 
American Value 2024 said it raised $11.28 million in just six hours following Kennedy's announcement in Philadelphia on Indigenous People's Day. Tony Leon's a co-founder of the PAC, is also in talks with billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk to court his support. However, Leon's declined to share details of their discussions or any potential contributions. When asked if Musk was excited about joining the fight, Leon said that Musk seemed interested. American Values 2024 said that the donations came from people of all political persuasions. Leon's predicted Kennedy's decision to run as independent would lead to strong front-raising numbers from a range of different ideological supporters. The PAC has raised money from prominent Democratic donors like Abby Rockefeller, but the majority of the money given to the PAC has come from Republican donors, including former Donald Trump donor Tim Mellon. Hurricane Lydia, described as extremely dangerous, had made landfall on Mexico's Pacific coast. The hurricane hit as a Category 4 storm, bringing wind speeds of up to 140 mph. But the storm has weakened after moving inland, with the U.S. National Hurricane Center downgrading it to a Category 2 status. Authorities in the state of Narit said a man was killed when a tree fell on the van he was driving. Ahead of the storm, Mexico's President Andres Manuel López Obrador announced that 6,000 members of the armed forces had been deployed to help residents. Residents took shelter from the storm at a nearby resort, with shopkeepers boarding up windows and piling up sandbags in case of flooding. Parts of Mexico's Pacific coastline have already seen significant flooding this week after Tropical Storm Max hit. Hurricanes hit Mexico every year on both its Pacific and Atlantic coasts. The country's official hurricane season runs from May to November, with more storms developing between July and October. The UN World Food Programme has resumed distribution of food to roughly 900,000 refugees across Ethiopia after revamping safeguards and controls following reports of large-scale theft of its donations. The UN's World Food Programme has resumed distribution of food to roughly 900,000 refugees across Ethiopia, it said in a statement on Tuesday. The aid was suspended in June, a day after the United States announced it was doing the same, following reports of large-scale theft of donations. Neither the WFP nor USAID gave details. However, an internal briefing by a group of foreign donors said USAID believed the food was being diverted to Ethiopian military units as part of a scheme orchestrated by federal and regional government entities. Ethiopia's army has denied that its soldiers benefited from any stolen food aid. The government had said it was investigating, but criticised the suspension. More than 20 million people need food assistance in Ethiopia following the Horn of Africa's worst drought in decades and a two-year conflict in the Tigray region. The WFP had been providing emergency assistance to nearly 6 million before it halted the distributions. It says there have since been major reforms at all refugee camps in Ethiopia, with all 24 warehouses in camps now exclusively managed by the WFP. New procedures and training, it added, would ensure refugees are getting the right aid entitlements. Food aid was resumed in parts of Tigray in August. The WFP said that it continues to make progress as it rolls out measures and controls needed to resume distribution for millions of other food insecure Ethiopians as well. Ahead of Poland's election this weekend, the country's liberal opposition is trying to galvanize undecided voters by highlighting what they see as an erosion of women's rights during the eight-year rule of the Nationalist and Law Justice Party. Women's rights are in the spotlight in Poland, ahead of this weekend's national election. The number of undecided female voters is twice as high as men in most age groups. And sociologists say, the opposition's success in galvanizing them could tip the scales. It's been eight years since the Nationalist Law and Justice Party, or PIS, came to power. And during that time, Poland's liberal opposition says women's rights have been eroded. 
Prawo i Sprawiedliwość nie szanuje ani kobiet, ani równości. Law and justice doesn't respect either women or equality, says Magdalena Boyko, attending an opposition rally. PIS says it aims to boost fertility rates and support families, while pushing back against liberal values that clash with Poland's Catholic heritage. It ended state funding for IVF. It enforced a prescription for emergency contraception. It launched a universal child benefit, and women who have at least four children are given cash incentives. A constitutional tribunal ruling banned abortions in 2021. And though the PIS says it opposes abortion, it also claims it had no power over the ban. Rivals argue the court is politicized, something PIS denies. There are exceptions in cases involving rape, incest, or a threat to women's health. Fertility rates in Poland fell to the lowest since World War II this year. Activists say that's in part because women fear pregnancy, following a handful of cases where pregnant women died of sepsis in hospitals, as doctors waited for the fetus's heart to stop beating. Massive protests that swept through Poland over the abortion ban may motivate some women to support the opposition, but it may also convince others their voice doesn't count. According to political scientists like Anna Mastrka Sosnowska from Warsaw University, I think we can see the source of it. For example, in the 2020 protests of women and men on the streets, this young generation in particular has been severely psychologically damaged, absolutely disregarded, ridiculed, and sometimes humiliated. The police were often brought in and used force. Therefore, this agency has become theoretically negligible. Polls show PIS is likely to win, but its support has waned. Some surveys show the mainstream opposition could form a majority government, even if PIS is in first place. Welcome back. A fire in northwestern Spain claimed the lives of four miners. For more on that story and more, let's take you on the world. According to emergency services, at least four young people have died in a fire in a residential building in northwestern Spanish city of Vigo. The International Monetary Fund has slightly cut its world economic outlook to 2.9% for next year. A key word from its reports was slow for both economic growth and rising consumer prices. A British man who broke into Windsor Castle with a loaded crossbow with plans to assassinate Queen Elizabeth II has been handed a nine-year jail sentence. The Russian Defense Ministry released footage showing Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu visiting a plant in a Russian city. The plant manufactures military transport aircrafts. Liberians voted in high-stake presidential and parliamentary elections. The first since the 2018 exit of a UN mission that kept the peace for more than a decade in a country scarred by two devastating civil wars. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch us by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in the US as the sky in Albuquerque was painted with a colorful display of hot air balloons during an international festival. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.